Hi, Catherine. Hello. How are you? Okay, and to the rest of the audience, um, my name is Maria Fisher, and I am the host of, of Conversations in the Den. And today we're speaking with Catherine in regards to uh, her lacuna stroke. Um, now, um, Catherine, how, uh, how long ago did your stroke take place? Um, I think it's actually a year ago today. A year? Yeah. Really? I think Ooh. so. Yeah. Congratulations. I know. <laughs> I've just thought on. Yeah, I think <laughs> Happy it was. <laughs> <laughs> it was the very end of September, so I think it might have been the, the yeah, 29, 30. Oh, okay. like well, we're very, very, very happy that you survived, that you, that you are Thank here you. with us today. Thank you so much for that. I appreciate it. You're welcome. That. And, um, can you explain to me um, what symptoms you were feeling um, prior to um, the stroke taking place? Okay, so I was a shift worker at the time and I'd been getting up uh, really early, 4, 5 a.m. Um, for my okay, shift. So you were not going to so I'd had, um, I hadn't had a great deal of sleep in the previous two days. So I was feeling pretty fatigued. But this particular Friday morning it was, um, I felt very sick and I just thought I had a sickness bug. So um, I, I went to the bathroom, I was sick. Um, but then I went into what I can only describe as a, like an altered state of consciousness oh. where can you, I... Can you describe that a little bit of what you remember? Sure. Um, bear with me because it sounds a bit strange, but this is what happened. Um, I went to the bathroom and I went to the bathroom. I wasn't very well. And I um, then became aware of that I was in front of three pillars, like almost like telegraph poles, pillars. And I was aware in my consciousness, I was aware that if I went closer to them, that would be the end of me, that I would be, I would be dead. Um, and so I didn't want to be dead. So I um, was trying to stay away. I couldn't see anything else but these three lines, these three like telegraph balls. Um, I, sh I shouted out. My so partner you were having like a hallucination? Yeah, it was like an altered state in the brain. Yeah. Okay. Um, and it was, you know, the thought processes and, it's, and the brain's actual consciousness was just skewed. Um, I shouted out as I thought I couldn't make words, but my partner heard me um, and he came up um, and he called the medics and the medics took care of me and had me admitted to hospital. Okay, um, so, the, so the, um, the paramedics came, took you to the yeah. hospital and at what time did you find out that you'd had a stroke? Um, it was a bit strange be because what happened was they were talking about Oh, you need this medication for a stroke. You need to have this test if you've had a stroke. They were talking like I was already aware that that I'd had one, but nobody actually sat on the end of my bed and told me for like another 48 mm -hmm. hours. Yeah, so nobody really disclosed to you what was happening. You were just feeling like out of sorts. Absolutely. And I was I was very um, sick. I was I was vomiting a lot all the time mm. and I was passing out a lot of the time. Um, and so I was drifting in and out of being aware of what was going on around me. Um, but then I'd be aware that I was being wheeled down for a brain scan or that they were coming to test my reflexes and things like that. Um, and it so wasn't until a couple of days later they actually told no me. At point between the time that the, the paramedics came for you, did they say to you, Catherine, we believe you're having a stroke? The, at the very first paramedic that came said, I need to do this test because if it is a stroke, we need to give you this medication in an oh. injection. But then I passed out and when I came round, I didn't know who anybody was. I didn't know who the paramedics were. I asked them, or I thought I was asking them. I wasn't making a lot of sense as it turned out. But yeah, in my head, I was asking them, why are you in my house? So I was very confused, <laughs> very confused. Why are you in my house? <laughs> well, the thing was, there was, these, there was this, and I must admit, a quite handsome chap, um, a handsome <laughs> chap in green yeah. in my house. You remember that part, though, do you? <laughs> I remember this bit. 
yeah. Oh, um, handsome chap in green in my house. What, what was he doing there? What was he doing there? <laughs> Especially in my hallway. Yeah. And it wasn't like he was a, a repairman or a gardener or yeah. he was just in the hallway and I didn't know who he was. Oh, okay. So he tried to explain to me, but I kept drifting away and coming back. Yes, yeah. I understand. You were kind of in and out of consciousness and awareness. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, so they took so, you to the hospital and you had some tests done. Uh-huh. And, and then, they, at what point did they tell you that, Catherine, we believe you've had a stroke? Um, it was almost 48 hours later. Um, what? Yeah. The, the, it was about 48 hours, two days or something like that yeah. when two days later, they, they, oh, you had a stroke. They okay. just sat down and said, this is what has happened and explained okay. it quite okay. clearly to so me. Can I ask you a question? Okay, so you had on um, what you said is called a, um, sorry, a, a leucular stroke? A lacuna, a lacuna. Sorry? A lacuna stroke. Yeah, yeah. So, sorry. Um, I'm also a stroke survivor, so don't mind if I, sometimes I have a little bit of a memory uh, issue, especially with new things. Um, me too. Um, so explain to me what this is. Okay. Yes. The, way, the, the way it was explained to me was? I had an ischemic stroke, so right. I didn't have the same kind of stroke as you. Right, right. Okay. So what they say is it's... Um, on the scan, you don't see the clot. You okay. see, you see, with the lacuna stroke, you see the gap, the the other side of the clot. You see where there's no blood because there's something blocking it, but you don't see the actual clot itself. Oh, okay, so you, they're seeing into into your um, wherever the wherever the um, wherever the um, vein or artery yes. or wherever. Yeah. And yes. they're seeing that there's a, a um, like something missing there, but they're not yeah, seeing the actual. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Okay. Yeah. So okay. that they see that there's a lack of blood supply to that particular area, but yes. they don't see the, what they're know, causing the blockage. Yes, exactly. And of course, we know that if there's no blood flow, that means there's no oxygen. Yeah. Yeah. So there's no oxygen going to your brain at this point. Um, and so this had been for approximately how long? Um, I'm not quite sure to be fair because I was really confused about what was happening when yes. it did actually happen. The point of I'm presuming it was when I had the hallucination, but I don't, okay, I, so nobody really you said were, you were awake during this time. Um, like this was in the daytime, it was How early morning. What time of day was this? It was early morning, about 7 a.m. Oh, okay, yeah. And um, as I say, at first I thought I was just had a sickness book, but I felt very different. And as I say, once I started so hallucinating, you were, already, you were already at work at this time. Could you start? No, no, no. Thankfully, I was at home. Thankfully, oh, okay. I was. At home. Yes. Yeah. I should have been at work that day. I should have been at work that day, but my boss changed my shift to last minute. So oh. thankfully, I wasn't because I would have oh, well, been a manager. I'd have been, a, I'd been behind a... Never even if you hate her. <laughs> <laughs> I would be behind a um, key-coded door. So if I'd have passed out in that office... Oh, yeah, nobody would have... Nobody been... would find me. Yes. Nobody would find me. Until they were very suspicious where I'd gone. Right. Yeah. yeah. Understandable. Yeah, this is one thing that I learned um, in, when I was studying CPR um that people tend to have this i mean you didn't purposely go do that go there because that's where your job was but mm. people tend to when they're feeling ill go away and seclude themselves yeah they might go into the washroom or wherever it may be but they're putting themselves in jeopardy because nobody's going to go and find you until somebody decides that they need to use the washroom yeah you know yeah. so it's best to um inform someone and um stay within range of people yes when yes. you're having when you're feeling um out of sorts yes don't yeah. lock any doors yes yeah okay, which so i thought about after the afterwards um because i wanted to go for a walk um but i was aware that if something happened on my walk who who would find me 
Mm -hmm. So I had a, a bracelet made. Yes. And something on my phone that said that I needed help if that was how I was found, that what that was what had happened to me. Oh, you've had that made since after you had the stroke? Yeah, yeah. Yes. I sometimes contemplate whether or not I should because I live alone. Yeah. Um, but, um, you know, it's like, I don't know. Um, I don't know. I don't, I don't know why I don't do it. I probably should. Probably should, yeah. Probably should. Yes, I probably should. Um, but needless to say, okay, so now they find this gap where uh, where this blockage is, is, and then what happens? Do they then um, try to um, somehow um, remove the blockage? So, so what they, happens with the lacuna is it clears itself. Oh, okay. So they see it on a picture on the scan, but then um, the next scan you get, then it's generally, it, the floors continued on okay. Okay. So it's not it's like a temporary, like, um, a temp a temporary situation. Yes, yeah. But it's not like a TIA type yes. stroke. It's um, it's different to that, but it's it's similar in as much as it's not a permanent fixture in your brain, but the lack of oxygen does the permanent damage. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. So in that in in the in the lacuna stroke, can you have um uh, um so you don't get a clot buster for that because no. that removes itself. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So what do they do? They didn't. Um, they check my um, physiotherapy. Um, they had somebody come to my house every day for a no, little while. I, no, no, I'm sorry. Uh, I mean, at the time when you were in the hospital, what did they do to you in the hospital? Um, just lots of tests and put me on blood thinners and uh, statins. Yeah. Okay, so Catherine, I'm a little bit confused. Okay, okay. so you have um, a space, but no cl no blood clot. So yeah. the the um the blood clot drained itself. Yeah. From wherever it was. So what did the hospital have to do? The hospital just all they did was they checked my um, checked me for if I could move my arm properly. If I was could think properly, could look after myself. Um, movement. Yeah. Okay. They could they checked I could shower properly. They checked I could um, tell the time. I knew who I was because um, I had a I've still got a, a memory issue, short term memory issue. Absolutely yes, I understand that. I have um, that and also. Um, I had a situation where I found if there was a lot of words on a page, I couldn't read it. Okay, so overstimulation. Mm. Yes, overstimulation is an is an issue for stroke survivors. Mm. Um, you know, um, when I'm look if I'm looking at a chart that has a lot of numbers on it or something, um, I, I it's very hard for me to focus. Yes. At first, I mm. thought, well, maybe I need to just start wearing my glasses. You know, but yeah. then I realized it had nothing to do with me seeing it. I yeah. could see it. It was just too too confusing. Yes. You know, yes. and as somebody whose job was looking at numbers and you know and budgets and things of that nature, it, it's very challenging for me because I think this is so easy. I should be able to do this. Yes. Yeah, I can. And then, you know, you, you can't. And um, so now, what kind of work were you doing? I know you were. I was a. Yeah. I was a um, duty manager of a store. Okay. I, was a, a, I was a duty manager of a, a large store, a large retail store. Oh, okay. So I was supervised the staff, um, obviously physically worked very hard, lots of deliveries, lots of unpacking, putting okay. things on the shelves, mm -hmm. serving customers. Um, and so, so you that went. The supervisor. Yeah, that, that went, that job went. Yeah. Yes, no, I understand. 
Um, but very much, um, if there was a lot of words or, like you say about numbers, if there was a lot of detail on a piece of paper or a magazine, I found it overwhelming. I found it very I overwhelming. Going to, um, I went, remember going to see the, to the neurologist's office and there was so much going on. There were posters and pamphlets on the walls. There was a TV on. The, the um, receptionist had a music playing. And I remember sitting there and I, I said to my mom, my mom had come with me and I said to my mom, like these people, don't these people know about strokes? They have so much stimulation going on in here. Like yeah. everybody in here is in here for a stroke. And yet they yeah. have TVs, music, pamphlets, posters. I mean, the, it was so, so much overstimulation. I couldn't even like, I just started closing my eyes. Like I just couldn't. Yes, even yes, yes. Yeah, so I, I feel I, I felt quite similar in an appointment that, like that, and actually sat uh, with my hand, and it was because yeah. the blind the blinds were moving behind him, mm -hmm. and I found it just too too much. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. Absolutely. And you would you would think that they would they would know that, but you would um, think so. Unfortunately, it's almost like these doctors have to have strokes to understand. I mean. <laughs> Yeah. I don't know who's asking, who are they asking questions from, you know, um, you know, they need, they, they need to be educated on what, on, on strokes. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, maybe there's some doctors watching here today who we may be educating, who knows? <laughs> hopefully, hopefully they'll learn a little bit. We you can know, all learn from somebody. Sometimes I just wonder, like, you know, we have such a high expectation of physicians. And I think that we think that they know all things, but they are not mm. God. Mm. They are just people who studied, you know, and, and they may have had a specification like that they studied maybe pediatric or whatever type of um, med uh, um, medical training they had, but they don't know all things because they cannot know from the top of the head to the bottom of the foot, all the things that could occur because there's so many things that could occur. Absolutely. You know, and so we have to almost be teaching them as stroke survivors, you know, what we are actually experiencing because they don't understand the experience. Yes, yes, yes. I totally agree. You know, they just understand the, the, the technical uh, or the, yes. you know, yeah. mm -hmm. and that is not enough at mm -hmm. times because mm -hmm. there are every, every single thing is different. Like, I mean, my stroke was a, was a ischemic, ischemic stroke not a leukler, leukler stroke. My stroke, I had a clot that traveled into my carotid artery and blocked um, the um, oxygen to my brain on the right side. And so the right side affects the left side of your body. Now, let me ask you a question. Do you have any, what were you left with um, as far as deficiencies? Were you left with any deficiencies other than yes, you have memory, short-term memory issues. And yeah. A week. I have permanent pins and needles in my arm. I have okay. pins and needles in my arm all the time. But you can, um, move, your arm. You can move your arm? Yes, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, it was mostly um, cognitive problems that I had. Oh, okay. Um, with words, with um, repeating. They're, they're very short-term memory mm -hmm. uh, so now, um, I had an issue where something would happen, I wouldn't realize it had happened and then I would do it again or somebody would say something to me and I would um, forget that they'd just said that to me yes. and ask them the same question mm -hmm. or I would see things, I wouldn't see things that were actually there in front of me. I'd forgotten okay. they were there. I'd forgotten. Yes, I'd forgotten. Visual, um, yeah, sometimes I find, to be honest with you, sometimes I find that on my left side there are times when i don't see things yeah yeah like you know the um the support worker might put my pill my medication down and if she puts it on my left side i'll say to her oh um, can you get my medication and she's like it's right there and i'm like oh yeah, you know, yes, I didn't see yes. it was on my left side yes but um generally speaking you know um, so you don't, you didn't have any, um, so you could walk and function in those ways physically, but you yes. just have a lot of cognitive issues. Cognitive and, issues and uh, fatigue as fatigue as well. Oh, and fatigue. Yes. Yeah. A lot of people have the fatigue, you know, they call it stroke. I, I was, I was lucky. Um, 
think I think because my partner found got me help straight away. They say that that's crucial, don't they? That the longer that you are without help, then yes, you know. I because what happened was I had low oxygen, so they put me on oxygen straight away. So that I think that helped a lot. Oh, okay. So you were in this locked room. Yeah. And how? And you left to go because you were going for a walk. No, sorry. Um, no, sorry. When it happened, I was at home. Oh, okay. Yeah. I was in the bathroom. Yeah. Oh, okay. So you're getting ready for work. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It was, um, as I say, I thought, I just thought I had a sickness bug. Yes, absolutely. I understand. Okay. So, um, your husband was home, your husband called the paramedics and you went to the hospital and they did the tests and, um, and, um, they continuously did tests on you and, and, and how long were you in the hospital for? Um, four days. I, mean, I, I was in. That you had a stroke. I was in hospital for four days. The the initially um. The t t they put me on a tilted bed in with oxygen and drips and things like that because my blood pressure was really low, my oxygen was really low, my oh, pulse was really low. So they were trying to get those stable. Yes, they get everything stabilized. Yes. Yeah. So they got me stabilized. And then um, once they got me stabilized and um, they could take me off the oxygen and let me get up out of bed because I was in this tilted bed all the time. Um, when you then they checked me as, um, as I could walk. They were tilting you in which direction? Like um, My head was down. My head was, was down and my feet were, was up. Oh. Were up. Um, they were saying to improve the oxygen to the brain. Yes, absolutely. So now, um, when, um, when you, um, I'm sorry, when you were, I just lost my train of thought. <laughs> I know that that comes from. <laughs> um, when, okay. So you were in the hospital, um, and they had you on the tilted bed and you the, were only in the hospital for four days. Yeah. And then after you left the hospital, you just went home. Yes, because what they do is they call it um, something like supported early release or something. And what happens is a nurse and a physiotherapist come to your house every day. Oh. So the because I live quite near the hospital. Um, okay. The staff, well, y'all okay, sent home. This is here. <laughs> we don't have anybody come home with us. <laughs> no. No. Um, actually, when I left the hospital, I went to a rehabilitation hospital. Right. Two hospitals. But I was in the hospital for like a couple of months. Right, right. Like four days. Wow. Yeah. They send you know, they, they send you to either rehabilitation if you need help with your walking or your or, or physiotherapy. Um but more so if it's cognitive, the they send you home and a nurse comes and calls on you and yeah, a physiotherapist. They, they don't have you have a pathologist, a speech pathologist to deal with your speaking and your um cognitive um thinking not at that point no oh, not okay. at that point that was that went a lot later I went to the rehabilitation hospital yeah, yeah. although that I was thinking, later. nothing can shut me up <laughs> so i was still speaking Catherine. <laughs> <laughs> go go <laughs> so can keep me quiet <laughs> good i'm glad i am glad i am glad um a, a long time ago um and nobody can tell me why I had something called aphasia, which is um, you lose speech, you lose the ability yes, to read. Yes, I, yes, I know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sometimes people. Yeah. After so after your stroke, you had had aphasia. No, this was this was um, years ago. This was an episode. Oh, that doesn't ago. relate to your stroke. This was just no, no, no. But I think maybe that was like a warning. That oh, was maybe okay. a warning. Um, because I, I, I couldn't read road signs, I couldn't read emails, I couldn't read my phone. Yeah. I didn't want to go to work. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then it came back. So I don't know. I don't know. I think that was maybe a warning. 
Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes, um, you know, little things happen. We take it for granted. We, it, it, like, I mean, when I was 17, I had a TIA, um, but not knowing what a TIA was, I just went back to school. I was yeah. a great student. So I was, I was a, a student. I, my grades didn't change. My thought process didn't change. I was also an athlete. So I played sports. I did all of these things, but I did not realize that I'd had a minor stroke. Right, right. You know, so, um, you know, sometimes it's just the not knowing. Mm. So you had aphasia, which mm -hmm. is, um, were you able to eat? Because um, people with aphasia cannot swallow. Not very easily. That's right. Yeah, not very easily. Oh, okay. But um, I, was, I couldn't tell a time. Okay. I couldn't tell a time on, a, on an analog well, you know watch. the reason why they created digital watches. That's it. I'm, my, I'm my partner, my partner told me the position of the hands when he okay. wanted me to meet me at a certain time. He showed me where the hands would be on the watch. And then I was just like, just, just get a digital watch. Just get a yeah, digital watch. Absolutely, yeah. <sighs> yeah, sometimes but, um, I, I couldn't read road signs, things like that. And yes. I could read an individual word. Mm -hmm. I couldn't understand a sentence yeah you couldn't put a sentence together and, it and get it clear in your mind yes yeah yeah okay so i think that was a warning but that that happened a while ago approximately how long prior to your stroke was this well a few years a few years okay. yeah wow mm -hmm. and then it just came back mm-hmm mm -hmm. But so I think that maybe had something. Did you mention that to your doctor? Um, I sort of, I don't know if I did actually, but I had seen the neurological, it was on my notes because I'd seen the uh, neurological people. They said that they thought it was maybe, um, uh, they said it, you can get something, a particular type of migraine that does it. Yes. Um, so, they said they could have been that, but it lasted for months. Yeah, lasted have, you, for have you suffered from migraines in the past? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yes, I do, yeah. But that, that aphasia lasted for months, so it was a long migraine. Wow. Yeah. And so they didn't, there was no form of medication given to you or anything regarding that aphasia? Um, not for the aphasia, no, but they gave me um, triptans that um, are supposed to help for um, migraine and they gave me epilepsy medication. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what the relationship with epilepsy and aphasia is. Well, the, the, it was the medication that is used for epilepsy can be also help in certain situations with that type of okay. cognitive issue. Is what they were saying to me at the neurological place. Oh, okay, so it was to, basically it was a, that medication was like to kind of clear your mind. It was for like the way I always imagine it is it's to, to sort of to make the connections stronger. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, I am again. Um, congratulations on um, surviving a year. Um, you know, um, it's such a blessing. I mean, sometimes, sometimes we don't even realize what a blessing it is. Now, do you have children? Uh, very grown up children. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have three children. They're all married and with children themselves. Yeah. Yeah. So you just get to be a grandma. You just get to take them for the good times and then send them home. <laughs> I've got my feet on the bucket of toys as we speak. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Then they are a joy. They are a joy. Good. Now, can I ask a question? Um, um, I don't know why I always say that. Um, now, what? How did you feel like um, in 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 regards to? Because I believe that this affects us in so many ways. It affects you, you your mental, your emotional. So, how was your relationship with your husband at the time after this transpired? Afterwards. Yes. After after it. Um, he was extremely worried and had been really scared. Yeah, but how were you towards him? Um, 
I was, I wanted, I didn't want the fuss. I didn't want the worry yeah. aimed at me. I, I didn't want to be the cause of the worry. I didn't want to be the cause of the stress. Yes. I didn't want to, I, I was okay. I was fine. Well, I was fine. Right? We are the nurturers, mm -hmm. so we're not used to being nurtured. Mm -hmm. um, and right. so when we are in those positions at times when we need the nurturing, we don't know how to accept it. Absolutely. You know, and so we believe ourselves to be a burden or that we're stressing somebody or whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm sure your husband was worried and um, he felt very blessed that you had survived. And he was probably like, he just probably did not even know what, how, how to um, even deal with his emotions at the time. Yeah, because I was initially angry at him for ringing the paramedics because I was, even though I couldn't speak, mm -hmm. I thought it was not necessary. So, oh. yeah, I was like, in my head, I was like, I I'm okay, it's just a bug. Yes. But I didn't realize when I was talking, it wasn't the, really. The, serious, the seriousness of it. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. So I was, I was like, when other people turned up, I was quite irritated. Mm -hmm. But then I lost, I was in and out of consciousness yeah. at that yes. point as well. So yeah. So now you're saying, now you just love him extra because he saved your life. Absolutely, he did save my life. <laughs> <laughs> so he, he did he, actually he, say he, that. Um, presents, extra birthday presents. He gets extra love <laughs> for saving your life, for keeping you alive another year. Absolutely, yeah, that's true, that's true. Now, were your grandchildren born at the time or your grandchildren yeah. have been born since? Um, no, they were all here at the time, yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. So you've been able to watch them grow, so that's a blessing. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. You know, you have to think of all those blessings and oh. when they crawl on you in the bed and you yeah. want to say, it's okay, it's time <laughs> for your mom to come get you, but you need to be <laughs> thankful because you get uh -huh. to have those little hugs. You know, you Absolutely. get to have those little moments with them that could possibly not have occurred. The thing is that it was part of my healing. The youngest one was part of my healing. Yes. Because um, I was adamant that he still came to visit. Okay. Um, but other people thought he would be too tiring because he was a baby, mm -hmm. a toddler baby. And yes. But he helped me so yeah. much I, because I had to yeah. do that connection. I had to yeah. think, I had to keep going, yeah, just exactly. do normal things. So he was an inspiration. He inspired you, motivated you to keep fighting, Grandma. He definitely, definitely did. Yes, that's wonderful. Definitely did. And when he came, and when I first came out of hospital, um, even though he was quite an active child, he just sat with me. Mm-hmm. And um, he, it was like he sort of picked up that he needed to be very calm mm -hmm. and, and not... Um, yeah, he had of... this instinctual feeling that something is changing grandma and I have to be a little bit um, calmer with grandma. Yes, yeah, I truly, I truly feel that that's how he was. And my partner said that, he thought that too, that he, was, he said about him being so, so calm, you know, when, when he first came. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, children are very perceptive. Sometimes we don't understand how perceptive they are, but they're just like, you know, in a sense, I mean, um, I hope nobody takes offense to this, but um, children, are, it's like a, a, a little puppy. Like, um, you know, um, my I bought my daughter a puppy because she had a lot of anxiety after, the, after my stroke. And he was just like, I mean, like, there was just um, like, you know, he knew when it was like, time to um be calm mm. he knew when it was time to be playful he mm -hmm. knew when kind people were coming to mm -hmm. visit and he, mm -hmm. and he knew when it was not so kind yes yes you know he um yeah they have these strong instincts and you know i think that the reason we don't follow these instincts is because we our minds are so cluttered with so much stuff we have to think about the bills the mortgage the yeah. um you know yeah 
the kids, you know, all of the cleaning the house, cooking yeah. dinner. You know, we have these 50 million things on our minds. And so we, our, our instincts aren't as clear as theirs. Theirs are clear because all, the, all he's thinking is, oh, I get to see my grandma. Yes. <laughs> You know, yeah. that's, 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 yeah. that's, that's, that's the biggest um, issue in his life. Yes. I'm seeing yeah. grandma, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, that this is the thing about children. And they really, truly are a blessing. Um, yeah, grandchildren. Really. Unfortunately, I don't have any grandchildren. I have two grand puppies. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same sort of thing, really. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so um so it's been a year and how are you feeling? Um I'm feeling good. I'm feeling um uh, frustrated, but I'm not think I don't think it's I don't think it's directly to do with the stroke. Okay, well, I think I just I feel like um uh, my brain is slower and not as quick as it was. Yes. And that frustrates me. Um, but there's so many other things happening in the world right now that... Oh, absolutely. I, that, was, I was just about to say, and I hope you did not watch the uh, U.S. debate last night. Well, <laughs> we saw a snippet on TV. I didn't watch it because I said, you know what? I have enough of my own problems to worry about. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to have to deal with that. Um, yeah. You know, I try... Um, I think what I've learned not to do... Um, you know, there are some television shows that I used to watch that I used to get really emotional. You know, I used to watch Grey's Anatomy. I used to watch, um, I don't know what programs you guys have over there, mm -hmm. um, but I used to watch, there was a program called This Is Us. I right. used to watch, and it's a, it, these are tear jerkers. All right, okay. You know? okay. And so I no longer can watch those because I will yeah. just start bawling. Yeah. Uh -huh. You know, I get very yeah. emotional. And I get um, emotional about other things like not even just negative or um you know emotional type things if somebody uh -huh. wins a competition i'll cry right right you know right. i'm like so happy for them that i'm like bawling yes. like, yeah. <laughs> like as if I'm <laughs> or something. you know it's, it's just it's, it's very it's very funny how your emotions just shift yeah. mm -hmm. and i found that i found out with me that i was um I was, I was, I had a shorter, shorter attention span, but also a shorter emotional span as well. Yes. I think that narrowed I down a bit. Not either. Mm -hmm. Now, did you find you went through um, any stages of denial or? Yes. You know, like, you yeah. know, they say there's a straight grieving, stages of grieving, you know, mm -hmm. there's denial, there's anger, there's, you know, I don't know the actual like, stages, but. Yeah. You know, um, I don't know the whole list, but the, I do recognize what you, the words that you've just used there and the denial, the anger, and the acceptance to the acceptance. Yeah, you get well. to the point of acceptance, mm -hmm. and you're a year in. I'm five years in. Mm -hmm. Um, five five years actually. Um, last June. Right. So I'm actually going into my sixth year. Um, so what have you found has helped you the most in your recovery? Um, I found children, my grandchildren, mm. were an inspiration, were a comfort, were the reason for being, the reason to do things, my family in general. Because you know what, you'll be babysitting every night. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I mean... My son has a business and um, I've been sort of involved with his business <laughs> um, with advice and occasional actually helping, physically yes. helping. You know, um, you, have to, you have to have things to focus on, I, I find. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, because if you, if you sit and focus on your illness, it almost um, makes it worse. Like, yes. Like, yes. you just... Um, you know, it's, it's, it's added stress that you don't need. So if you can distract yourself mm -hmm. with, with things, um, sometimes it's, it's, it's best. Like, you know, yeah. I watch, um, I watch TV shows like interior design shows, cooking shows, you know, just things to keep my, that 
don't take me I don't have to think. I'm not trying to figure out who done it. I'm just watching. That's yes. It. Yeah. You yeah. know. <laughs> um, I find that um some people misunderstand that they think that I'm um den in denial, but really it's just I'm trying to keep my brain focused. Absolutely. And keep it Absolutely. going. Moving forward. Yeah. Um, now one thing I found, and I don't know if you might want to try, if you have an interest in this, but do you do crosswords and um, I do sometimes. those kind of things? I do, craft, I do crafting. Oh, okay. That's wonderful. Um, and I, I do like crosswords. Are you I do like, or, crosswords. like, what are you doing? Um, paper, anything paper-based. So oh, okay. journaling, scrapbooking, cards. Oh, well, that's nice. Um, I do, um, I do knit, I do crochet, but um, I, that, I'm, I've seemed to have lost focus on that a little bit, and it's more I towards the paper side. Yeah, I understand. And um, I love, I like drawing, I like painting. When we were in full lockdown, oh, that's a beautiful um, we took on some painting courses online. Mm -hmm. and there were only four. Don't laugh. Well, you can laugh if you like. They were for four to six year olds, the painting sessions, mm -hmm. but they were based on the great masterpieces of the world. Okay. So, um, well, you didn't, they didn't turn it into Picasso or anything. But you they didn't, didn't know I wasn't six years old. They didn't know. I, I just followed the, just the same. <laughs> and it was fine. So you that kept me. You're just having a good time. And sometimes it's very it's meditative. Distraction. It's very meditative and very um, calming. Yeah. Now, speaking of meditation, did mm -hmm. you find that you also needed spiritual healing? I think that, yes, I did. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think that's why I initially turned to my interest in that type of thing as a possible employment, self-employment for small business. Um, because um, before the job that I had at the store, um, I was self-employed as an aromatherapist and did Reiki and did okay. holistic healing and that type of guided meditation and that type of thing. Oh, nice. So you, so you got, so you got involved in that, you were involved in that prior to your stroke or you got involved in that after your stroke? I was involved in it prior, but then what happened was, um, I got a contract to supply my services to the local authority for people okay. that they sent to me but um the contract bit by bit the money was less and less and less and less so i decided i would go for a job at the store instead because that would be a regular inc income okay yes um and so, so now after the stroke, and now i've gone back to the yes. holistic and the aromatherapy and although um i don't do the massage anymore i don't do the massage anymore well, I do, you know, you used to give massages, but now you yeah. um, now you receive massages, I presume. And um, well, nothing at the moment because COVID, you know, oh, coronavirus, yeah. you can't yes. can't do this. But yeah, so I now, like how Reiki. Is COVID, how is COVID affecting you? Um, I miss my family. Yes. I miss my family. I miss hopes. I do still see my grandchildren. Yes. But it's difficult to see in, in this Very particular you area. You included them in the bubble right away. <laughs> <laughs> they were in there from day one. <laughs> but when we couldn't actually even see our families, I didn't see my grandchildren for about 10 weeks. Oh boy. That must and that was cool. torture. Yes. That was torture. And the phone calls, they would just cry at the other end. Mm. So the but phone they calls... They needed to feel grandma too. Yeah, you know, it's so it. it's, it's both of you. you. You need their hugs and they need your hug. Yeah. So when I did see them, the, the youngest held on to me for about five minutes solid oh. and um, just kept taking his face away and looking at me and then mm -hmm. is it really her? And yes, it really is. And okay. so okay. I miss that. I miss them. Dread. I did miss yeah. them dreadfully, but I have now see them. You're allowed to see your grandchildren now, um, but it's difficult to see family in general. 
<laughs> they, they've allowed their grandchildren to see the grandparents. They've realised it's it's needed for the economy in the in the, in England that grandparents look after the children. I think. Oh, because they need um, because you're you, so that your um, children can go to work. Yes. And yeah. then, you know, so that hopefully you can um, start buying your Christmas gifts early. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so get the economy going. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is that we can see the grandchildren we can't see the children um okay. although so they you can't when you can see baby. them <laughs> you can see them but you just can't go in their house so you need oh, to go okay. outside yes yeah, so you they see them outside you drop off your grandchildren your husband takes them and bring them in and then they leave um they the, you can't visit you can't at the moment in, in this town Mm -hmm. You can't go inside somebody else's house. Oh, okay. So you can see them in okay, the yeah. park. Children, um, they, they say, and I don't know how they know this, but they say children are not carriers of this. Mm -hmm. As far as I understand. Yeah, they said something I about that. The... I, don't, I don't really understand. I mean, so, you know, for anybody who's listening, don't take my word. I'm just saying what I've heard. <laughs> you know, I yeah, heard we, well, we, here in the UK, we were told pretty much similar, pretty much similar thing, that the, the children don't have enough of it, um, uh, enough of the germ in them to pass on to somebody oh. with any grey. Oh, okay. But, um, I mean, it's in different areas of the UK, it's different rules, but the area that I live in, um, you're not allowed to go in somebody else's house. Oh. And you can um, go into, I think you can go into a restaurant or a bar, but not their house. Oh boy, <laughs> that makes so much sense, eh? That makes every bit of sense. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you can only go in the bar up until 10 p.m. because yeah. you must be out by we 10 actually p.m. have the same rules in Ontario where I live. Yeah, really, really. In Canada, it's yeah. Just, but, it's not as bad as not being able to see them at all. So I am great. Oh, yeah. absolutely. So you're like, okay, I'll do I'll, yeah, do, I'll, I'll take that. I'll I'm take tired, that. I'm tired at eight anyways. <laughs> <laughs> so I find it a bit frustrating with COVID um, about trying to start a new business, trying to set up a business. I feel like I don't. I feel like I don't know what people want from a business at the moment. Well, I think now, the, I think probably one of the challenges is that so much has changed in um in um business. So yeah. much of it is is technology based now. Um, and if you didn't have that knowledge prior to your stroke, it's probably very trying to set it up that way. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. very likely you could probably do your business online, mm -hmm. but you may not have the knowledge. Yeah, yeah. You know, oh. um, and it's I like I'm not, I can see the, the Alicia. I couldn't even do the podcast. Right. And right. I was somebody that worked in IT for seven years, and right. then I worked in in finance in the at the university in the vice president's office for eight years prior to my stroke. So, but now I find so many things are so challenging mm -hmm. and it's frustrating because you think of all the schooling, you think of all the things that you did prior to that you no longer can do and people don't understand because, you know, for example, because people see me talking normally or whatever, um, they just assume that I'm the same. Yes. They yes. don't understand that there are things that I no longer can do. Yes. You yes. know, um, but, you know, medically, um, I know, and, um, you know, but it's, it, it, it's very challenging. It's mentally, it's emotionally draining. Yes. Um, it's emotionally challenging. Like, I find sometimes I can't sleep. Um, uh, today I have, um, you know, my, I have dark, dark things under my eyes because I didn't sleep well last night. Um, I just, you know, it, it's, it's every day is a different day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I find that too. I do find that too. Yeah. I find it sleep difficult. Yes. I don't seem to sleep very well, but I also feel, um, I feel very grateful. Um, I'm still here. <laughs> I feel very grateful that I had the support that I had. I feel very grateful it wasn't worse than it was. 
Yes. Um, but I, I, I totally agree that um, people don't realise the emotional or the, the cognitive issues that can come along with it. Yeah. Like, um, people, I mean, I joke about it, but I worry about it too, that I order the same thing online and then I'll order it again and then I'll order it again within maybe a couple of hours <laughs> and the parcels will turn up. <laughs> and then the parcel and it'll be the same book and another book and the same book and one day the the postman brought three parcels it was the three the, the book sent the three the same book the, three times oh, i've done that many a time and um i use amazon and there's times when i've ordered something three times yeah and you know i'm thinking to myself i didn't order this three times <laughs> yeah yeah. But I guess I must have because um, it came three times. Yes. I think that Amazon should say, are you sure you, st are you, sure you want this again? You know, you, you know, it's like, can you double check why did I order it four times? Yeah. <laughs> did you really want another? Did you really want another? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But, you know, um, it's, um, it's up to us. We have to take care of ourselves. Now, For sure. I hope... Um, so now, so you enjoy reading, you you said. Yes. Um. So I hope that you're um, reading some, um, you know, enlightening books. Absolutely. So giving you some. Um. What have you learned about yourself since this has happened to you? Um. That I carry forward a sense that my father never thought I was good enough that I wasn't doing the things he wanted me to do. Mm -hmm. um, that I could have done better, should be doing better. I always wanting to do more, always wanting to achieve more, mm -hmm. always wanting to learn more. Um, so I learned, I, I've sort of discovered that that's self-imposed. That's not anybody else doing that to me. That's me doing that to me. Yes. Um, yeah, sometimes it's only, it's only ourselves. Just, an extreme amount of pressure on ourselves. Mm -hmm. You know, I used to, um, I used to say, you know, okay, you know, um, you know, I was a single mother of two, and I wanted my daughters to have everything. You know, so if they wanted swimming lessons, they took swimming lessons. If they wanted gymnastics, they took gymnastics. If mm -hmm. they wanted ballet, they took ballet. Yeah. You know, my youngest, she played the violin. My eldest played the flute. Um, you know, like, I mean, I just wanted to be the best mother I could be, you know, and, I, and so I put myself to the back and I put them to the front. Yes. So there was no real self care on my part. Mm. I was so busy taking care of them. Yeah. I didn't have time to take care of me. And the things that were going on in my head about not being good enough. Yes. You know, and so we have to learn to take care of ourselves. Yes. Self-care is extremely important. Um, you know, talking to somebody about the things that are bothering us. Like, um, did you go to counseling? Any counseling after this? Oh, uh, no, 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 no. But um, I, I have a friend who I do a Reiki share with. Oh, okay. So, um, and she is, she does um, counseling for um, other people but i think sometimes when i go to see her for my reiki and for chats then i think there's a little bit of counseling thrown in there for free i think <laughs> she's like just sneaking it in just throwing a bit in there <laughs> but not not to, not formally i didn't go to counseling formally no. yes but they did send out somebody from a stroke i'm a counselor after because um you know it's so traumatic yeah. you know yeah. um yeah. Um, I had physical symptoms of not being able to walk and yes. move yeah. my butt, move my arm, having left side paralysis. So, um, you know, that was very traumatizing for me. Mm -hmm. Um, I can imagine not being able to speak was very traumatizing for you. You yeah. know, how do you express yourself? How do you, um, you know, convey information to people of what your needs are? The, the thing that there was, um, they have a stroke society charity over here. Okay. And what happens is the hospital get in touch with them and then they come out and visit you. Yes. So the, the charity can do 
some counselling if you feel that you need some and they can deal with things like um help getting help with depression and anxiety and yeah, did you find like that you had any, any of those signs symptoms uh, anxiety yes depression i don't think so depression but maybe other people would say it differently but i don't think i did but uh, anxiety yes because i in my opinion i was totally different from the person the day before it happened so i was okay. running a store i was running helping manage staff i was, was responsible for a lot of physically putting a lot of money away and a lot of stock on the shelves and dealing with a lot of customers yes. one day and then the next day no i can't so yeah anxiety i would say yeah well um i really hope that um uh, you know you um any services that they that they offer you um because you you know we don't know what what causes these things you know and sometimes we're carrying a lot of a lot of weight whether mm -hmm. it be stress or whatever the case may be and you know um it causes inflammation in our bodies um there are things going inside on inside our bodies we're not aware of because we're just used to carrying so much yes so oh, yes, if you have sure. the opportunity i would suggest i would recommend to you um that you do talk to someone um, and maybe not your girlfriend who may not have, who, who may not be unbiased mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. because she obviously might love you and mm -hmm. she doesn't want to hurt your feelings. She doesn't want to um, bring up things that she knows will affect you. Yes. But sometimes talking to a stranger, um, it does, it is easier um, because you can just, you know, say what you feel, you yes. know, like I'm angry because this happened and this yeah. situation is, you know, my husband is pissing me off or, you know, yeah. whatever, whatever you want to say, you know, yes. yeah. <laughs> and then she's not going to decide, oh, your husband's oh. a bad man, mm -hmm. she's just gonna, because your friend is going to say that, yeah. but, you're, but the stranger is not going to say that, mm -hmm. she's just going to say, okay, you're go, you're experiencing this because of this situation yeah. that transpired, yeah. you know, so yeah, you do have advice. the opportunity and they're offering the services for free. Yes. And take advantage. Mm -hmm. You know, use the services that are off being offered. You know, yes. because it's important that you heal, not just physically, but you need to heal emotionally, mentally. You know, and that will clear some of the thoughts from your mind. That's what I have found, anyways. Yes, I think that's sound advice. I started going to church after. Yeah. Uh, I was raised by a, my father's a pastor, but I was never really a church girl. I was never really into church in that way, but I found that after the stroke, I found that I started developing a relationship with God. Right. Yes. You know, where I started talking to him and th being thankful and having gratitude. Yes. That I, cause I, I had a stroke in my sleep, you know, and so, just being grateful that I woke up that day. Yes. Yes. We're all grateful. We are all grateful. You know, we are all grateful that happened. Yes. You know, and I know that um, in the beginning, I thought, you know, when you said to you that you were upset with your husband, I thought you meant you wanted him to just let you die. Oh, no, no. That's what I thought, but I understand now that you were just upset because he brought all this noise, the, the ambulance, and the mm -hmm. paramedics, mm -hmm. and all this mm -hmm. chaos that he didn't understand what was happening. Yes. So I remember, you know, one day saying to God, you know, why did you wake me up? You know, why didn't you just let me just go? Right, right. You know, you have those moments and people don't understand those moments. I'm sorry. No, don't. Please don't be sorry. Don't be sorry. Don't be sorry. You know, but in the beginning, not now, this is five years later and I'm glad to be here and I'm thankful. You know, yeah. so uh, when I think of people who think about terminating their lives and things of that nature. I mean, um, the people that have died from strokes, I mean, celebrities, people that we've heard of along the way, you know, um, you know, who did not make it, you know, um, or who maybe their family decided that they were, they were going to take them off life support or whatever the case may be. I am so happy to be here five years later. I think that's so not right. I think that's unfair. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
unless you can't breathe on your own or you are like in, in a, such a such a situation that you cannot function in any capacity, I don't believe that anybody should make those decisions for you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I don't ever want to go through this again. So, you know, um, you know, feel free to pull the plug. <laughs> 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 but, um, you know, um, you know, and okay. I say that in jest, but I say that in truth. Um, right. this is, this is, this is a challenge that is beyond anything that I have experienced in my life. It's very hard. It's very difficult. Um, every people that are going through this pandemic now understand the isolation aspect of it, but yes. Yes. you know, the isolation is extremely difficult. It's very challenging. You missing your grandchildren. I understand that 100%, you know, um, you know, um, both my daughters are grown and they both moved away and they're mm -hmm. living their lives. And I completely understand that they need to live their life. Um, but I do miss them. But in truth, I miss my grandpuppy. I miss all the times when he used to jump up on my bed and I say, get out of my bed. <laughs> but I miss, I miss him coming on the couch beside me and cuddling with me. Yeah. You know, I miss yeah. all of those things. Yeah. You know, and um, I miss him like trying to steal my socks. Oh. <laughs> Little silly things, you know. I miss them. Oh. Yeah. And um, yeah. you know, it's 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 hard. You know, yeah. you know, when you're a person who um. I mean, I was a mother for 30 years. I mean, I'm still a mother, but you know, you know, my children were with me. Um, my daughter was 18 starting university when this happened. So she changed um, when she went to university, she changed and became about all about herself, which is the time that that happens when mm -hmm. you become about yourself. And so, mm -hmm. um, you know, that time, but I needed her, but yeah. I couldn't be selfish and think that she needed to be with me, you know, she needed to go to school and um, do what she had to do. But I always thought that, you know, I just never thought that it would be this extreme, uh, a difference in my life. You know, I mean, I'm used to being yeah. a mother. I'm used to going to work every day and seeing my coworkers yeah. and laughing with them and enjoying their company. Yeah. But you don't even understand that, that you, that those are parts of your life that actually have so much meaning to you. Absolutely. So they're not there. Yeah. You yeah. know, I remember the day that they told me that I couldn't go back to work. Yeah. Um, because here in Canada, what they do, what your insurance company will do, the, the insurance company for your job, um, they send a form to your doctor every three months. And at some point they decide whether or not you can go back to work or not. Mm -hmm. So I'm on medical leave from work. I've been mm -hmm. on medical leave for five years from the university right. um, and they decided that I cannot go back to work. My job right. was too highly stressful, right. too much detail, um, yeah. you know, things of that nature. So they decided that, you know, and then also, you know, because I wasn't there, my, my um, every, everybody has <laughs> moved on. No, um, the vice president retired, the chief financial officer retired. Um, so all the people that I worked with, I mean, the vice president of human resources retired. Right. Um, most of the people that I worked with retired. And mm -hmm. so me going back to work, it mm -hmm. would be very challenging for me yeah. Yeah. because the people that yeah. are used to, I'm used to working with yes. and doing things for and with, um, are no longer there. Yes. So yes. I don't know if that was a part of the reason, but it was very challenging for me. But I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm just, I'm very grateful to be here and I'm mm -hmm. very grateful to be able to do this show and hopefully teach people about, you know, what we have, we have gone through mm -hmm. and so that they can, if somebody experiences what you are experiencing, maybe mm -hmm. the visual things, whatever, mm -hmm. um, they can say, you know, Hey, something's going on here. And instead of yeah. thinking, you know, yeah. I must be losing my mind, yeah. you know, like you may have thought. Yeah you know, they can think something more deeper is going on here. Yes. You know, when I was having headaches for a week, you yes. know, and have feeling numbness in my legs and my arms, 
I never thought, I mean, I was 46 years old. Mm -hmm. I never thought I could be having mm -hmm. a stroke. Mm -hmm. You know, or mm -hmm. this could be um, signs of a stroke. Yes, yes. You know, um, it never crossed my mind. I just thought, because, you know, every now and again, your butt falls asleep. You know, yeah. your arm falls asleep. Yeah. You know, these things happen. And we just um, take it for granted. Okay, shake it off. Yeah, you know, but all the things to think about. Now we have to think about things. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and so this is this is what I hope. I hope that in these conversations in the den that we are teaching people to focus and pay attention to the things that are going on in their bodies so that when things happen, they can go and get it checked out. Yes. That's a really and important. ensure that it doesn't become something bigger. Absolutely. So important. So important. I mean, you know, we can only do I was so dismissive. So dismissive of what was so happening. Oh, we are. We all are. Mm -hmm. We all do the same thing. Oh, you know, oh, this is, oh, this is nothing. You yeah, know, it'll okay. pass. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. we all, we all do the same thing, especially mm -hmm. women. Especially so women. We, yeah. um, you know, we talk about, we don't only talk about strokes on the show. We talk about a lot of things. And there's a lot of people that, you know, have said to me in conversations, you know, I have a high pain to tolerance. And, and with pride, like, you know, I have a high pain tolerance. You know, well, when you're in pain, your body's telling you something. So yeah. don't try to tolerate the pain. Why right. are you having a high pain tolerance? Why are you tolerating pain? Mm -hmm. You know, go get it checked out. Go find out. You it's know, a message. It's, it's you a know, message. You know, you never know what is happening. Mm -hmm. You know, but, um, you know, again, uh, I wish I had some balloons or something. I wish I had known it was your anniversary today. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it would have been really nice. Okay. <laughs> I am very, 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 um, you know, I thank God that you are here. I thank God. And likewise, for likewise for you. And for your children and for your thank husband. Because the poor thing probably wouldn't know what to do without you. <laughs> you know? <laughs> but, um, you he, know. he wrote it down at the day he was right. He wrote it down in his diary that I allowed him to be right that day. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so how many years have you been married? Uh, we've been together 13 years. This is my second re relationship. So did you say three zero? No, oh, one three. Three, yeah. Oh, uh, one three? Okay. Yeah. So out of 12, out of 13, out of 12 years, he was right once. Once. <laughs> and twice the day we met. <laughs> Oh, the day you met, the day, the day we met, met, and the day and, and the and stroke. Yes. yes, yes. So he was right twice in twelve years. <laughs> God bless him. <laughs> <laughs> it's been lovely talking to you, Marie. I hope you. Hope, I'm so glad that you. Thank you, Catherine. Came to and, um, you know, um, well, next year we'll celebrate. <laughs> you know? um, so. Um, Take care. Um, stay safe. Um, and you. And you. All of, I know that it's very challenging to follow all of these rules and regulations that we've been put under, but they're there for a reason. So let's all try to follow. Stay safe. Keep ourselves yes. and yes. our families safe. Yes. And um, I'm you know, um, take care of yourself and um, you know, um, meditation. You know, and um. If you have, if your son or one of your daughters or your son can help you set up an online store to sell mm -hmm. your products, your aromatherapy mm -hmm. products that you sell, you know, that might be a good thing. Yeah. And if you, I mean, even um, the uh, other part, the therapeutic part that you do with the meditation, you could probably do that online as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, so I mean... You know, whatever, something to keep your uh, mind occupied, something to is, keep you busy, is. focused on uh, other things, the healing of others, you know, um, you know, focus on the manifesting healing around the world right now. We all need to focus on manifesting healing on in the world because right now healing and abundance are definitely lacking. And abundance, not necessarily in things, but abundance and love yeah. and blessings. Yeah. yeah. And all of those things, you know, I mean, okay. we're, we have to really manifest blessings and, and um, prosperity in, 
in love and blessings and tenderness and comfort and family connection, mm -hmm. you know, and all of mm -hmm. those things, mm -hmm. you yeah. know, so, um, you know, it was very, very wonderful talking to you, Catherine. And I'm here. I'm here. But the best. And I hope to speak to you again next year. Lovely speaking to you. And um, I, I like those you. things you blow that, you know, that come make a noise on you, like on an anniversary. <laughs> With the little balloons and everything. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. Yes, we'll definitely get those. Um, no hat, though. Uh, I won't get you a hat, but... Um, <laughs> oh, no. Okay. <laughs> yeah. you know, Thank you so much. Family. It's been lovely speaking. We can toast each other virtually. <laughs> yes. <laughs> lovely speaking to you. All right. Okay, take care. And you. Take care. Stay safe. Okay, bye-bye.